Welcome to the second episode of Series 52, everyone. We are really excited for you to meet our characters this episode. But before we get there, our abridged announcements. Tune into our call to action for full details, but quickly we wanted to congratulate Alchemistresses for passing their funding goal this last week. Mm. It's very exciting because now it's a real game and we can all have it. Uh, Also, we have some information on a new gaming bundle on Itch to help those in need after the recent uh, Roe vs. Wade reversal decision that happened here in the U.S., Mm -hmm. Yeah, and finally, we'll have some patron thank yous, uh, as well as other normal calls to action. Uh, For now, uh, thank you for joining us for the second part of our Under the Neighborhood series, everyone. Enjoy. Character Creation Cast. We created the small town of Hartford in the Midwest USA that had a small town floating in the sky above them called Sky Hartford, all taking place during the day of the belated Valentine's Day Parade on February 25th, 1997. Kyle was creating a Mon Trainer, Amelia was creating a Divided. And I was creating a magical girl, of course. We're picking up right where we left off last time. Enjoy. All right, so the next step after that is we are all going to choose moves. Uh, Most playbooks have three moves. The Divided has four, and that's just because the Divided, again, some of the later playbooks, in fact, all of the three we've chosen are hyper-specific playbooks that include their own additional mechanics. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of us actually have required moves that force specific gameplay mechanics on us to make our characters work because we are so unique. Okay. So if you see a required next to your name, that's going to be something you need to take. So, yeah. So mine says moves pick three Uh, magical girl transformation is required. So that counts as one of the pick three. Yes, that counts as one of the picks. Okay, three. so it's really pick two. Yeah, it's really <laughs> pick two. I just wanted to like, I wanted to streamline it into one section rather than multiple. But yeah, that makes sense. I only get to I only get to pick one. Mon Trainer starts very limited in what it can do, but that's also because I am going to gain a power no one else gets, which is I get additional little critters. Yeah. Um. So here's a question. Yeah. I'm looking at actual magic. Uh, when you first take this move, choose one of your stats. Whenever you use actual magic, harness the magical power of your patron to make a magical action using that specific stat. So I would want to pick something that I'm good at, right? If you were optimizing, probably because... Okay. Because the, other, the other thought I had to... was like, okay, well, if I have this ability, then I can maybe use a stat that I'm not as good at. But I guess I yeah. still have to roll either way. So it w- it would that's one that really would depend on the GM's ruling of, you know, can you do this thing? Because, for example, let's say I have uh, let's say I use that ability and I used books, which gives me something beneficial. And I say every time I use this move, I make a ladder. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't have to roll to make the ladder, but you would have to roll to climb the ladder. Gotcha. Um, but, for example, if I used it to make a laser beam that I'm going to shoot at somebody with fierce, then. I'll probably have to roll every time I do that. Okay. Well, if you're looking at that, let me actually change one of mine because I actually chose a move that has overlap with that. Well, you can stick with that one because I'm not sure. I was just trying to understand it. I'm not yeah. sure if I'm going to take that one or not, but. These are so good. I I looked up magical girl tropes and I just picked my favorites. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> how, how could you choose? I mean, I already, I already took one uh, for sure. Uh, so my second one, um, the mascot companion. Oh yeah. Cause I mean, we already got a mon trainer, so I'm going to have my own, 
uh, Mon effectively. Only they're uh, intelligent and there to uh, guide me. And a whole bunch of other rules I haven't read, but you know what? I get a little adorable thing to follow me around, so I don't care. I mean, I don't understand what else would be important about that. Right. <laughs> a whole bunch of game stuff and a magical companion follows you around is fine. This one um, says, take a corruption point to get a full success on touch the other side without rolling. Is that, is touch the other side, is that a basic move? That's a basic move, okay. yeah. Uh, that is a book's basic move. Mm -hmm. uh, touch the other side is what you use whenever you try to utilize something that is cryptic or arcane. So it could be, like with the divided, it could be something as literal as, I'm going to use this magical tome. Or it could be something as, you know, I'm... I'm going to use this old manual drive car and I only know how to drive automatic. Mm. Gotcha. Okay. Well, obviously I'm going to take that because anything that's like, take a corruption. I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> corruption for days. Yeah. All right. I think I have mine picked out. I've got it. I got to choose one more. Um, and I'm between a few. Um, so that doesn't help. No. So I see in a lot of these, there's um, a description of the thing, of the move, and yes. then it says advanced or advanced alternate. Yeah, so that's going to be part of our leveling up system. Uh, something I realized when using Powered by the Apocalypse a lot of times, because you didn't really have an advanced versions of moves, you oftentimes would start by picking your favorites, and then you progressively get ones you're less and less excited about because you started by picking oh, favorites. Oh, you picked all the ones you already wanted, yeah. Yeah, so l as like a mid-tier advancement, you get the ability to take some of your existing moves and make stronger versions of them. I really like and that. Yeah, thank you. And if you see an alternate, it essentially means you get to choose one or the other. You can take the advanced version or you can take the advanced alternate. And those were in instances where I thought, I don't know what I like more is the better version of this ability. So I'll put both out as options for players, seeing which one they would like most. Okay. So it's not much. You technically can spend AP to access an advanced move early. But at this point, it's it's not something that would factor into most of your play. Right. So I, I love that uh, the magical girl has a move called retcon button where you can retcon a minor detail from the past adventure. That's that's pretty fun. I'm I'm terrified of when my players take that. Move. Uh -huh. <laughs> but oftentimes as as a GM, especially if you're one who likes control, choosing moves that would terrify you are sometimes the best things to give your players. Yeah. yeah, that one was inspired by the lucky charm from Miraculous Ladybug, where at the end of every adventure, even if they destroy the Eiffel Tower, not the lucky charm, uh, but at the end of every adventure, she'll throw her little magical item in the air and then basically all the collateral damage gets undone. Oh, nice. So the idea was, well, let's have something like this where you can retcon one big thing. That makes it sense. was also related to some shows that have a tendency to change the status quo and then completely upend it in infuriating ways. Oh, yeah. Well, there's also the, the Sailor Moon phenomena where, like, all this <laughs> random magical stuff happens and parts of the city explode and nobody cares. Yeah, that was that was the other inspiration. There's an episode of the show Card Captor Sakura where she literally turns into a kaiju that can be seen and is screaming across the entire town and nobody says a thing. Yeah. There's no news about this giant elementary schooler that was wrestling Godzilla in the park last night. Yeah. And like these shows, they have news during the episode. Like here's a little newscast of, <laughs> oh, there's something going on in the park, blah, blah, blah. But then afterwards, nothing. Just crickets. Yeah. Because it they're all kind of bottle episodes that link together <laughs> in, in a way. Yeah. And in a show like this, I, 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 in a game like this, I like to allow for the opportunity for there to be recurring stories because like Gravity Falls, the Owl House, especially the Owl House after their third season got canceled and they had to cut all of the quote unquote filler episodes will often have a plot going on between them. And I wanted to be able to emulate that with this game as well. Mm. But 
I thought giving the magical girl a l- just a little bit of power to be able to take a small detail and undo it in an interesting way uh, could be just a fun, a fun little tool for players. Yeah, I like that. OK, I've got my uh, my moves selected. OK, perfect. If we uh, when we go over our playbooks, I think something that could be helpful is because all of our playbooks are the very specific ones that are I think it's help. It'll be helpful for us to read kind of the description of what is our deal and then go into our moves, which our moves will often explain how that mechanically works. But, you know, we've kind of danced around, for example, what exactly the divided is. Yeah. So I think it'd be helpful to go through, read the description at the beginning saying, this is who you are. Here's some examples. Well, l- and then let's just do that now. The moves. Okay. We, we, we piece right things right together right. Uh, uh, block by block, so to speak, uh, on the show. So I think this is a perfect time to to tell, OK, what our playbook is. And uh, and what moves we selected. OK, you want to go first then? Sure, I can do that. All right. OK, so the magical girl. Life in the mundane and the magical can be complicated enough. So what happens when you belong to both worlds? Unlike most people, you're able to take on a powerful magical form that lets you battle monsters and perform amazing feats, all while trying to finish your homework. This playbook is built around the duality between your mundane and magical lives and the ways that they impact each other. So, examples, Sailor Moon, uh, Adora from She-Ra, uh, and then uh, Miraculous Ladybug, like we mentioned. Yeah. Um, and then for my moves, um, I get the Magical Girl transformation right away. Um, so I can shed my mundane form in order to become a magical warrior of hope and friendship. Uh, in order to complete this transformation, you need to shout a transformation phrase, which I'll figure out in a little bit uh, once I have my theme down um, and do a transformation <laughs> dance. So that's that's your typical transformation sequence that uh, fans of the show know I'm all about. <laughs> um, and, and that gets you into your magical form. Um, but I also have a mascot companion uh, who I'll detail out later, but the mascot... I can have conversations with and uh, they're pretty knowledgeable about things, which is great. And uh, a magical item is the other thing that I chose. Um, So one of your signature items is a magical artifact that lets you channel your magical powers. So uh, it's it's usually like a useless looking trinket when uh, when in my mundane form, but then it gains a super ability, basically a magical ability while I'm transformed. Um, they, they have such examples such as flight, sense and evil doers, or a powerful beam. Yeah. And signature items are things that we will choose later as we go on. We'll choose skills and signature items, but essentially a signature item is just something that you have that you use a lot. And like, uh, Adora has a sword, um, or Anne from Amphibia has a tennis racket, or Mabel from Gravity Falls has a grappling hook. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I went with the divided. Something from the other took an interest in you and gave you strange, powerful abilities. However, this came at a cost. Your patron has their own agenda in mind, and as you continue to use your powers, you can feel that agenda getting closer to completion. This playbook is built around your relationship to your patron from the other and your relationship's inevitable, unfortunate end. Um, See here, examples, Lena Saberwing in DuckTales, Viren in Dragon Prince, and Misha Jarvis in Quest Friends. The game has a lot of promo. (laughs) What? The game has a lot of (laughs) self-promo. Hey, you know, like I always think like, you made it, do what you want with it. It's your thing, you know? (laughs) Um, so I got four moves, two of them were required. Um, so I went with patron's corruption, which is the divided starts with a 10 point corruption meter. This meter fills as a certain action, as certain actions happen. Filling the meter is also referred to as taking a corruption point. The divided takes a corruption point anytime one of the following happens, uh, when I roll a critical failure or gain corruption is outlined by one of the playbook moves. Then there's like a whole bunch of other descriptions that I'm not going to read because... That's not fun for the podcast. 
Um, Essentially, you get more corruption and you have a meter. And once it fills, bad things happen. Yeah, which is why I took a bunch of stuff that takes corruption. Um, <laughs> and then I, uh, the other required one is magical enhancement. Before rolling, access your magical connection to the other to enhance the result of your roll. Example, failure becomes a mixed success. This doesn't avoid critical failures. Uh, if you roll a full success, you extend yourself further than expected. Take a corruption point on a critical success. You may uh, either take the usual benefit of a critical success or avoid taking corruption points. So, again, more corruption. <laughs> uh, friends on the other side, take a corruption point <laughs> to get a full success on touch the other side without rolling and through other eyes. View the world through the eyes of your patron. Ask the GM a simple question that your patron would know the answer to, except for the patron's plans. They must answer truthfully, but in turn, the patron is able to ask a question of you, except for your plans. You must answer truthfully or take a corruption point to avoid answering. Corruption. I'm assuming you will never answer the patron, not once. I mean, probably not. <laughs> or I will lie. I don't know. All right. And then finally, I took the Mon Trainer. Whether they're cute little critters or fearsome collectible cards, your world is littered with creatures who you can make friends and do battle with. This playbook is built around your relationship with your Mon companions. Examples are Ash Ketchum from Pokemon, Yugi Moto from Yu-Gi-Oh! and Irene Hawthorne from Quest Friends. Uh, so what I do is I get three moves. The first one is I Choose You. I Choose You lets me start with, basically lets me have Mon. I started with one for simplicity's sake, but you can have up to three. Each of these mon need a name, a element, and a signature stat. So a signature stat is which of the stats best represents him. So my character, Johnny Gator, the Sky Gator, yes. is going to be my Necromon. Johnny Gator has the element of swamp, and his signature stat is fierce. Oh, if amazing. we were playing this game, I would then hand Johnny Gator over to one of you. And essentially what would happen is, unless he was in our equivalent of a Pokeball, which my character does not use Pokeballs, all of his Mon roam freely at all times, <laughs> essentially you would be able to control your Mon. You would speak as it, you would move around as it, and you could do independent actions as Johnny Gator. Amazing. Um, and that's just a way to flesh him out a bit more and make that relationship a bit more real. Uh, other ones, Wild Mon Capture. Wild Mon is going to let me capture additional Mon, either through battle with Fierce or through heart, through friendship. I chose heart. I mean, you get to decide in the moment, but my character would go with heart. And essentially, based on our role, I can either catch the Mon permanently, catch it temporarily, or not catch it and be sad. And then finally, the last move I chose was Elemental Blast. Elemental Blast lets me harness my Mon's element using their signature stat. So the signature stat I chose for Johnny Gator was Fierce, because I just really like the idea of the sweet boy with a fierce, fierce Gator. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Fierce means that he would have an attack. And so because my element was Swamp, all I have written for the attack is just in all caps the word Swamp Wave. So Ooh. that's what I've got. I've got a Sky Gator who can shoot a wave of swamp as an attack <laughs> and is very fierce. And again, if we were playing, would be played by uh, one of one of the hosts, would not be played by me as a way to enhance that relationship. Oh, that's really cool. I do want to point out that it really does say for failure under Wild Mon Capture. Failure, you fail to catch the Mon, you are sad, Little frowny face. Because uh, I just think our, our listeners need to understand that it really does say you are sad. Uh-huh. Uh, it's fine. It's a, it's a good RP prompt. It is. I love that. I just like uh, the addition of the little frowny face. Yeah. It was important to me to include the frowny face. There so were you a know just how sad you are. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I noticed uh, for my Magical Girl transformation, I had to choose a, a signature stat. So whenever I'm transformed, I, I roll with advantage with that signature stat. Um, so I chose heart, of course. Makes sense. Yeah. So when you do any actions with heart, you would roll with advantage. And how that works is essentially instead of rolling two dice, you would roll three and then take the results of the top two. I like that. 
Yeah. And that's the playbooks. Playbooks do include something else, which we can do now or do later. They give you prompts for one skill and one inability. Speaking of advantage and disadvantage, a skill is going to be something that when you use it, you roll with advantage. And an inability is something that when you roll with it, you roll with disadvantage, which is roll three dice, take the results of the bottom two. So, for example, ones I'm going to choose is I'm going to choose the skill of interacting with creatures because I let. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say I'm real good with creatures. That's why Johnny Gator loves me yeah. so much. And then I'm going to say that my inability of the list I have here is resisting challenges and dares. So Ooh. if I ever have to interact with a creature, I'll roll with advantage. But if I ever, but if I ever have to roll to resist someone calling me chicken, I'm going to roll with disadvantage. Oh, all right. Um, gosh, there's so many good ones. Ooh, yeah. I think I got to choose this one. Oh man. Okay. So I, I got a lot of great skills to choose from, uh, mm -hmm. but since I am action girl. Um, I'm going to go with a rollerblading. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. I want to be a rollerblading magical girl. That magical sounds amazing. Derby. <laughs> so good. Well, especially in 1997. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. Can't forget this is 1997. <laughs> mm -hmm. How I keep forgetting it's 1997. I think I figured out what my magical item does I mean, then, too. Johnny Gator's timeless. <laughs> yeah. So my magical item gives me one magical ability. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say defy gravity um, to Ooh. allow me to rollerblade on ceilings and walls and cliff faces Whoa. and the bottoms of islands and stuff. I love it. Then what would your inability be? You're good at rollerblading, but what are you bad at? Being alone. Oof. <laughs> I keep forgetting I made that one. It's so sad. I know. I have that in my <laughs> options, too. <laughs> It's very sad. So for my skills, I went with understanding the other. Okay. Uh, for inabilities, though, like I, these are all good. Physical fitness, <laughs> identifying <laughs> lies, being alone, interacting with creatures. I kind of want to go with interacting with creatures just because I feel like that would be fun to play out. <laughs> As like, I, I am not good at hanging out with Johnny Gator. Oh. Yeah, great dynamics with with that. Yeah, I just think that that would be fun at the table. Um, I do think identifying lies would also be fun to play out, but um, I think I want to go interacting with creatures just because I think that would be really fun, especially if you don't put Johnny Gator in a Pokeball. <laughs> um, no, he needs to roam free. <laughs> I can't figure out if he flies yet or not, or oh, if he just he moves around to. on his little gator legs. I think, okay... Hear me out. Okay. He hovers off the floor, like, just like an inch, so that his little feet move. I love but, it. But, like, he can't really <laughs> go very high. But but swims amazingly in clouds. Yeah. In yes. clouds, yeah. Swims through the sky. I love it. Amazing. I was thinking and about... I am terrified of Johnny Gator. Yeah, and I was thinking <laughs> my magical companion could be one of the animals that lives on the underside of these floating islands. Oh, great. Ooh, so I'm I afraid like of your magical thing, too. Yeah. But I'm not okay. sure. I'm not sure what type of animal that would be. Like. I think it, I mean, it could be like a, like a mollusk kind of like a, a sky mollusk. Sky mollusk. <laughs> sky, sky mollusk. <laughs> well, I was uh, thinking it could be um, either like, uh, I don't think I want to go monkey or, or whatever. What about like a fox? Because you know how like dogs do that thing where they like, curl up like around you know so like they make the little cinnamon roll yeah so like i feel like a fox would be like i could just see it like curling up on the other underside of Ooh, a sky fox cloud. yeah would be fun sky that's yeah. real cool uh, i like when dogs do cinnamon roll my parents dog yeah. is named winnie so my sister calls it winnamon roll <laughs> oh. it's very cute so i've i've got a sky fox um not to be confused with star fox right <laughs> Um, Please, my father was Star yeah, Fox. My father was Star Fox. <laughs> Sky Fox. Um, it's it's got to be a blue fox, right? With like a, a white streak uh, oh, through his tail. I, like that. I think that would be pretty Looks sweet. Like the sky in the clouds. Yeah. I love it. 
All right. Now that we've gotten our playbooks, it's now time to get that just nice little, the nice little twist, Mm -hmm. the little, you know, little seasoning on top, the frosting for our cake. We're going to choose a descriptor. A descriptor is, again, going to be uniquely to our characters. It is going to give us a move that's a little more powerful than our playbook moves, because the idea is that this is the thing that our characters really specialized in. Uh, it's also going to give us one more skill, one more inability, and it will give us a prompt for a signature item. And again, all of these things we'll look back on later and decide, do we want to change these? But it's going to start by giving us these prompts. So we in the base game have 30 descriptors, which range from everything from being adaptable to being able to do anything that a spider can to having a podcast <laughs> because I couldn't resist but putting that in there. Oh, I know what Perform one I'm going to do. Stage go magic? Oh. And then the name of your when you put it in your moves, the name of the move for your descriptor is just the name of the descriptor. There's so many good ones. Yeah, and I I have locked in mine, so I pretty instantly chose stumbled into success. I like that. All right, I think I'm going to go with this one just because uh, we've got this sort of theme going on. Uh, I'm going to do uh, does anything in animal kin. Ooh, what um, what animal are you going to go with? Oh, do I have to do a specific one or is it all animals? Uh, it is meant to really let you choose a specific animal that you will get an attribute of. Oh, okay. so uh, the idea is, say, uh, Spider-Man can shoot webs or climb on walls. One of those specific ones or uh, uh, another character, because I use My Hero Academia as reference, even though it doesn't quite fit the mold. Sue from My Hero Academia can do frog stuff. That is literally her superpower. She's got a frog tongue. OK, um, so, yeah, the descriptor will tell you to pick a, car- a creature that exists and you will have you will get to choose an ability that creature has that you can do expertly, but then you also oh. have to choose a physical trait from that animal that you have as well. I see. Every descriptor has its own uh, set of rules that it that follows along with it. Yep. So instead of just picking based on what the what the descriptor is, I should probably check to see what it actually is. So here's a question. Oh. Yeah. Um, I was going to pick was lost in the other. Um, but the skill is the same one as the one that I'd picked previously. So should I go back and pick a different skill? Uh, so if you get the same skill, we have two options for that. Mm-hmm. You can either double it up into what we call a super skill. So you're just doubly good at it. Essentially, okay. you would have double advantage. You'd roll four D6 and take the top two. Okay. Or you can choose another skill. At a later point in this, we're actually going to go back and we're going to adjust any of these skills that we want. Like I, for example, know that I want to change one of my skills already, but I'll wait till later to do it. Okay. So yeah, it's up to you. You can either combine them into a super skill or you could just choose something else. I kind of want to just like be really good at that. I'm good with I'm I'm happy with that. Um, and then my inability would be pathfinding. I almost chose pathfinding as an inability, so I'm glad that I didn't. So we're not all lost all the time. Right. <laughs> we're just not good at sneaking. We're just all going to be very bad at that <laughs> all the time. I love it. Oh, there's so many so many options with this one thing. It's interesting. Yeah, the descriptors are very involved. Some of them are very straightforward, and some of them have almost as much writing as a single playbook. Uh, specifically, cast spells. Cast spells, and there's another one I know that I just had a field day writing. Let me find the name. Harness's Incredible Power. That was one of the ones that I finished writing, and I realized, oh... I could have just written a playbook instead of this. <laughs> <laughs> but where's the fun in that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just like the rest of the game, you can have a very simple character that's just very straightforward. You get bonuses on certain roles. You can do this one neat thing. Or you could have a long character sheet full of million different options mm-hmm. if you wanted. That's really interesting. Did you pick yet, Ryan? 
I, I have not because there there's a lot that's in here that's like so delicious um like now i'm looking at cast spells because you know magical girl and casting spells right mm -hmm. um and then as you advance you can combine your spells Ooh, that sounds really cool i didn't even look at that one yeah well, i should have yeah, i'm happy spells. with my choice Very <laughs> spells. cast spells was me uh specifically copying the magic systems from the Owl House and from Card Captor Sakura. Oh yeah. Ooh, I better start looking at names while you're picking. Oh, this poor book. I need to get a new copy of it. Is it a na a book of names or Yeah. It's oh, I saved cool. my baby name books from when I named my kids, but like Oh. There's like a whole section that's just like not in the book <laughs> anymore. Um and I know that this one is one that like it's got a bunch of stats on the names and stuff, too. So they put out a new one every oh, few years, cool. I think. I like it, though, because it in the back of it, it has um, name groupings by, like, theme. So you can go through and pick ones based on, like, the sounds or the origin or yeah, something like That's that. They have a whole cool. section of androgynous names. and Wow. Stop time for 30 seconds. Ryan, you don't have to play the character. No, it's amazing. Um, I love this character so much already. Um, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna choose cast spells instead. Okay. Um, uh, because of uh, I can choose three spells, uh, or create three of your own. Oh, that hurts my brain. At how amazing that is. Um, <laughs> and then I have to choose one drawback. So I'll I'll choose the drawback first. So my first question is, um. How liberal does one get AP in this game? So AP can be gained one of two ways. You can gain an AP when you fail a roll. Okay. And the idea for that is because I like the mechanic of getting experience when you fail to roll empowered by the apocalypse. Yep. But when we get to, uh, when we get to advancement, you'll see, I don't like XP as an advancement tool. I prefer milestones. Mm -hmm. So I had it be this resource called AP. Okay. So that's one way. And then the other way you can get it is through a GM intrusion, which is another thing we Ooh. took from Cypher System, where the GM basically causes... It's I get to do a hard move yeah. without being prompted by a failure. And a hard move, for reference, is essentially something happens and you can't really stop it. Um, so like... You're going to go through this room. The wall crumbles down in front of you and you can't get through or something like that could be a GM intrusion. Right. Um, so it depends. The way you play, you could have a little. The way you play, you could have a lot. I know when we play with quest friends, one of our players talks about how he is always he feels like he's drowning in AP, but he also doesn't have any moves that use AP. So he only uses it in the general sense that most people can use it to like cause advantage or auto succeed a role or something like that. Okay. Uh, so I have a lot of options for the spells for what the drawback is, but I'm going to choose casting the spell costs one AP. Okay. Um, Cause then I feel like I can, I can save it up and, and just do a flurry of things at once or, um, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of good options there though, but um, for my spells, I'm going to choose uh, time because oh, the, the, it just feels so good uh, stopping time for 30 seconds. That can be uh, really nice. Um, I was thinking um, armor as well. Uh, create a protective barrier against physical or magical assault. Um, so that sounds really useful as well. And then I was thinking like hop, probably. Spring to high oh, heights. That's fun. So well, like in, in Skytown, you'll need it. Yeah, exactly. Especially rollerblading <laughs> around and like rollerblading on uh, off of, uh, you know, three story buildings in downtown Skytown. Yeah, absolutely. Were they were they called would... it uptown at that point? <laughs> <laughs> no, they would not. I um I went with something much more mundane. 
I went into Stumbles into Success, which the example for that is Inspector Gadget from Inspector Gadget. Oh, yeah. Through no real intention of your own, you find exactly what you need. Once per adventure, pick a question you have, item you would like, or place you would like to find. You get the answer, item, or route, but the GM can make a soft move in response. So this is actually, one of the playbooks has a move very similar to this, but for that one, you need to spend an AP and you have to roll. So that kind of shows the difference between playbook and descriptor, because as a descriptor move, it's less usable. I can only use it once per adventure, but it's stronger. I just get what I want, but the GM can cause a complication. Um, That move also came with a skill, inability, and signature item. So it came with the skill of reckless actions, inability of tactics, and signature item of a winning raffle ticket. Again, I will... I already know kind of how I want to change those as time goes on, but... For now, at this point in the character creation, I'm just going to take the ones that were given to me. And then once I've kind of figured out my character, I'll come back and reevaluate these. So cast spells should have given you some as well. And then what did you go with, Amelia? I went with um, was lost in the other. So when you came back to the mundane and the magical, some of the other came back with you. You can harness your experience with the other to roll with advantage. Uh, but full successes will become mixed successes whenever you do so. Critical successes will remain the same. This effect doesn't apply when rolling for control the other, uh, which is rolled by rolled with a weird stat of plus zero and with advantage. Uh, my skill is understanding the other, which I just increased because that was the one I had before. Um, my inability is pathfinding. My signature item is a basic polyhedron with constantly shifting number of faces. Oh right! I did the I did the infinity dice oh. from Gravity Falls. Oh, that's lovely. So at this point, we've got most of our character summary. So Ryan's character is the magical girl who casts spells. Mine is the Mon Trainer who stumbles into success, and Amelia's is the Divided who was lost in the other. Yeah. Now that we've got the mechanic things and we figured out what our characters can do and. We've got some ideas for skills and abilities, although, again, we can change those as time goes on. This is the part where I encourage in the uh, rule book for us to start filling out some of the things that might not have a mechanical impact, but are still important for us to know for our characters. Mm-hmm. So let me find the full list because playbooks are just so dang long. Yeah. Oh, and I, I forgot to mention, I got uh, understanding the magical as my skill from that descriptor and then inability of understanding the mundane and i got a dust dusty arcane object as Mm. uh as my signature item there i like it so specifically the things that we want to fill out is we want to fill out our character's name our character's pronouns how old our character is we don't need a specific thing but you know vague idea Our character's appearance, specifically the most striking features about their appearance. Our character's home world, this is the world that our character calls home. So are they, and our choices are the mundane or the magical. So is Hartford our home or is Sky Hartford our home? And then finally, I encourage us to always start with a very basic want. This is just something to help make sure that we have an idea of what our character is doing in any given scene. Okay. I did pick a name. Got that I, far. H. You're ahead of me. Yeah. Well, it's because you were taking forever to pick your spells. No, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I feel like age. I want to be like high school. That's what I was going to do. I was going to do like a high school, like junior or senior, I think. Okay. Was what I, that, that was the vibe I was going. But that's also because there was something I decided from the very start I wanted for my character that didn't really come up mechanically, Mm -hmm. um, which is why I already know what skills and stuff I want to change. Okay. I figured out a first name, but I need a good generic Midwest white last name. (laughs) Oh, um, let's see here. Hold on. There's a section of last names in this book. Mm. Uh, let's see here. How about Campbell or... Brennan Caldwell. I like Caldwell. Caldwell. Caldwell speaks to me. All right. <laughs> that one's real good. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were all good, but that was that was the one that, <laughs> that spoke to my heart. 
I think it's because I knew I knew a Campbell, and so that was getting a little too yeah. close to home for me. But yeah. I don't know a Caldwell. See, I know a Caldwell. I don't know if I know a Campbell. Okay. Um, I got a name for my character. Okay. Right. Going with uh, Daisy Thunder. Ooh. <laughs> I love wow. it. I went with Novella Bane. Oh, that's so good. Thank you. Love that we've got we've got all these fantastical names. Hi, I'm Aaron Caldwell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Hartford. Uh-huh. But Johnny Gator. <laughs> with Johnny Gator, yeah. Uh, <laughs> did uh did you go through and uh handle the other details? Uh I went with she, her as my pronouns. High okay. school junior. Um my appearance I just put vaguely spooky. <laughs> um homeworld i i didn't know if we wanted to like all pick the same one or if we wanted to like i, I assume w- ryan wants to be from sky hartford yeah yeah i think it works either what either way for me especially because we had i and i know i said i picked one of the weird playbooks but since we had a magical girl and uh a divided I really wanted to balance it out with the most mundane person I could think mm-hmm. of. So yeah. it's important for me that I am from regular heart. Food. Yeah. Okay. And like, it's, it's pretty easy to get from place to place and it could always, you know, before our first adventure, you know, Aaron could have gotten stuck in sky Hartford for one reason or another and can't get back. I or like, vice versa. I like living in Hartford, but I would like to be a transfer student to Hartford from sky Hartford. I love it. I really like that. Yeah. Um, I really don't know what I want to do for a want, though. So, like, I, I guess what is yours? Like, how broad or. Yeah. So mine are. So to go over some of the things I mentioned, mm-hmm. he, him, high school, junior. Uh, my appearance is I've got the appearance of a football player and I'm a blonde guy. Uh, so I, I look like, you know, the standard big stocky blonde fo- football player. Mm-hmm. And I'm often on the football field. As part of the band's drum corps. Love it. Um, Love it. I'm from Hartford and my goal, not my goal, my want is to befriend all the little critters. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's my thought with wants are always to make them very simple, straightforward. Uh, Some examples of wants from the cast of Hereafter. One of them wants the scoop. Uh, One of them wants to be the best trainer like no one ever was. And one of them wants to be left alone. Amazing. That's his want. I love that. It's just something to help really just reframe, like, what's your kind of deal? So even if there aren't little critters in any scene I'm in, I would know that, like, well, if they come up, that's what Aaron cares about. Or he's the kind of guy who would prioritize that. I like that. So it can be vague or specific. Okay. I'm going to say my want is to be the smartest person in the room. There you go. Oh, that's a good one. And were you with anyone other than Aaron, they would hate you. Yeah. <laughs> but, but Aaron doesn't care. Aaron uh-huh. doesn't care. And I am terrified of that gator. Yeah. Well, that's, that's fine with Daisy, too, because um, so uh, Daisy's pronouns, she, her, uh, 19 years old. Uh, she just started uh, community college uh, in Hartford okay. proper. Because they okay. have oh. a good roller derby uh, team there. Oh, okay. Are you here on scholarship? I'm here on scholarship for the roller derby. For the roller uh, derby team. Yep. In, yeah. In Perfect. Hartford. Mm-hmm. In Hartford, the you know it's it's the uh, it's the one thing. I think it's the Hartford the, heartthrobs. Yes, the Hartford <laughs> heartthrobs. Absolutely. Um. So then, uh, Daisy's home world was Sky Hartford, and mm-hmm. uh, and her want is to become a roller derby champion. Perfect. Oh my gosh, I love these kids. <laughs> and a detail you added, Ryan, I really liked um, was that you still had, even though you're living in Hartford, you had the home world as Sky Hartford. Because mm-hmm. the way home world works is really what you call home. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if at any point that could change, you could be like, you know what? I really think Ground Hartford is my home. <laughs> Ground Hartford. Uh, then you could change that, but, <laughs> and vice versa. But even though you're living in Hartford, since you think of Sky Hartford as your home, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure, Amelia, with your character, whether what what she I think I'm trying to think of Hartford as my home. I'm working on it. <laughs> Love it. Like my parents have said that this is our home. So mm-hmm. I guess we'll see. That's really funny. All right. <laughs> so the next thing 
that we're going to do is we've got two steps left. Now that we've kind of figured out who our characters were, before we think of them as a group, Mm -hmm. we can now go back and figure out, are there any stats, skills, or signature items you want to change? So, for example, I'm going to change a couple of things. My stats, I'll probably keep them the same. My skills, I'm going to replace reckless actions with drumming because I want to have that drum core thing. And then my signature item, I'm going to change to my lucky drumstick Mm. because those just because that was a bit of flavor that I decided. I'm like, you know, I'm kind of feeling that with my character. I'm going to go back and change those mechanics to match. Okay. And I technically could go back and change moves and descriptors, but what the rule book encourages you to do is actively think about your stats, your skills, your inabilities, and your signature items, and just think, now that we've fleshed the mechanics out into a fully formed character, is there anything mechanically that would change for this person? Okay. Okay, so if I wanted to change a stat, uh, would I bring one down and one up? Exactly. Yeah, you would adjust it so that the overall amount is the same. So, for example, I have a plus one of books, and I actually considered moving that down to plus zero and maybe upping my slick. But I decided, uh, you know what? Aaron's all right at school. Mm -hmm. He's pretty okay. It's more important to me that he is as unsuave as possible. He's got good (laughs) hearts. He's a charming boy. But if he's trying to be like duplicitous or manipulative or sneaky, it was important to me that stats stayed the same. I like that. I kind of lent uh, uh, leaned into it a bit. Um, Can you step it down twice and up another one twice? Yeah, you can put one down twice, put another up twice. Oh, amazing. You can put one down (laughs) by two and put another up by one. The key is that none of your stats should be above two or below two. And when you put them all together, it should equal plus one. Perfect. So I adjusted my books down to negative (laughs) two and I brought my slick up to plus one. So now I've got plus one and everything uh, except for books at minus two. Uh, She's really banking on that roller derby scholarship. (laughs) I love it. I'm happy with mine. I don't want to change anything. Okay, perfect. In that case, we've got one last thing before our first adventure after our first adventure i would encourage uh i have in the rule book encouraging folks to come back and adjust their character sheet but before we play there's one last thing we have to figure out and that is our compatibility score compatibility score can go from negative one to plus three uh negative one is frenemies plus zero is acquaintances plus one is friends plus two is good friends plus three is family whether and family in more less the physical sense and more the emotional sense the uh Um, the fast and the furious definition of family exactly the fast and the furious (laughs) perfect or olive garden to allow for flexibility that's only when you're at olive garden that's true (laughs) (laughs) so to allow for growth we recommend choosing a score between negative one to one so negative one zero or one um they don't have to match but mechanically we will always stick with the lower of the two compatibility scores. And the idea behind that is, I'm going to tell you flat out, Aaron is going to place everyone at plus one. He thinks you both are good buddies. But if, say, uh, you know, let's say Ryan's character is like, I don't know or like you, and has me at a (laughs) negative one, even though Aaron thinks we're good buddies, that our compatibility score would be negative one because we're incompatible, like right. we're not super compatible. So when it comes between characters, we always lean towards the lower number. OK, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'll start. Aaron would have a plus one for both of you. Why? Well, he would have a he would have a plus one. Could you remind me of your character name, by the way? Ryan uh, is Daisy, right? Daisy. And I'm Novella. Mm-hmm. OK, so. I would imagine a plus zero. I don't know what Daisy. It would all depend on whether or not I knew Daisy. Novella is in the same school, in the same grade. Mm -hmm. So Aaron is going to think of Novella as a friend, regardless of whether or not that is true. Mm -hmm. Fair. I well, uh, Daisy's probably really good at roller derby. 
and it feels like that's like the the big sport in small town Hartford. Okay. Okay. Just so because. you'd be doing your marching band drum yeah, Do we have marching bands at roller derbies? Yeah. I love it. Yeah, so I, there'd be like uh, demonstration, roller derby demonstrations and stuff. And like, uh, you know, the roller derby teams like to reach out to schools and and whatnot. Yeah, well, you got to recruit from the local high school. For exactly. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I probably and I probably uh, maybe even came from this this high school uh, of sorts, even though I still think of uh, Sky Hereford as as my home. Is your home. Yeah. So for um Maybe you were like the big theater school for the roller derby. So you did have to transfer here to get into oh, know, yeah. to even be scouted oh, for the roller fun. derby team. Yep. I love that. Because they're not scouting from Sky. Like Hartford. they're like my my picture is on the in, in one of the glass cases uh yeah. for like the latest class uh of uh of champions. Like we took the championship mm-hmm. or something like that, yeah. but that was at the high school level. Yeah, we level. went to state. Yeah. yeah. State. Perfect. So, yeah, with Daisy, I don't know. Would we have it, like, be at a plus zero? Like, I know who you are, and I've been to a lot of your roller derby things. But, like, has Aaron and Daisy, have they interacted a lot? I mean, of course, they'll be part of the same party. But, like, outside of shenanigans, have they interacted much? Or are, they, are we starting with more of a, I vaguely know who you are? I wonder... Um... I wonder if uh, if you may have interacted with my my magical persona more. I I I love it. Like like what if yeah. what if I had you know sa- saved the school bus or something like that at, at some point in my magical persona? It is mentioned that while it's recommended that the party knows both of your personas, it is stated that. NPCs by definition will not know both. Right. So we could have this start like at the beginning of this campaign at our first adventure. Maybe we could start with a plus zero compatibility for Daisy and Aaron, like in the mundane world. Mm-hmm. But in the magical world, not only did Daisy save Aaron, Aaron just like helped out. He was he was the normie, you know, the, the, he was he was the <laughs> mundane sidekick of the week who oh, like, like that t- 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 took charge. OK. All right. So I'll do. Plus zero between us when you're in your mundane form and then magical form plus one. I like that. Now, I put it at a plus one for Novella because Aaron likes Novella. But an important question, how does Novella feel about Aaron? Because that's what's going to be the make or break on this compatibility (laughs) score. (laughs) Right. So, like, originally I was going to put plus zero because I feel like I just don't care. (laughs) But also, like, you have that stupid gator. (laughs) <laughs> and you hate the animals, right? And I hate him. It's so, like, I kind of want to put negative one. <laughs> negative one was how I imagined it. I okay. imagined it was going to be, I was a plus one, you were a negative one. So okay, we I'm going to do that then. Because I, I think, like, I don't really care. But, like, why can you not? Why do you have to bring the stupid gator to school? Yeah. I love him. He's Johnny. He's he's not a gator. He's my friend. Right. Okay, uh, well, then and- you are not my friend. So... <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to change it to negative one on my sheet as well. I could have kept it as plus one and we could have in the moment, Mm -hmm. but I find it easier to just mark the compatibility score the same across both people so that we can watch the relationship grow on both of our character Mm. sheets rather than say you like me more. So your goes up to plus zero, but I'm still at plus one on my character sheet. I like being able to mark that growth on both sheets. Okay. Um, And then with Daisy, can I'm thinking that possibly, like, we know each other from when we were both in Sky Hartford. Oh, yeah. That, like, I don't know. I mean, like, even if you wanted to say, that, like, we grew up as neighbors or something like that. So, like, I don't know that we're necessarily, like, super close, but you're one of the few people around here that, like, you know, I can talk to you about stuff before I moved here. What if, what if we were, like, um, like, elementary school friends like really good sure. friends in elementary school and then middle and like school now kinda, at this age we have like nothing in common anymore yeah, middle but school like, tore us apart we've but always like, been friends yeah yeah do you want to say like plus one or zero or yeah i was thinking plus one um okay, that works for me because i think um daisy uh, not only now because of the uh elementary school connection but like mm-hmm. um i think she she admires your book smarts mm-hmm so I think I think that would be another big one. 
Um, yeah. And then uh, Daisy with Aaron, um, also plus one there because uh, Daisy uh, Daisy thinks that you know Aaron stepped up in a in a troubling time and was able to uh, to to hold his own. So like you know, yeah, uh, that that's that's pretty uh, that's pretty cool. So yeah, I, I like this kid. Yeah, I like that. I'll yeah, I'll change it from having a Daisy Mundane and a Daisy Magical to just a single Daisy plus one. Um uh, mostly because this compatibility score relates to only one move. And as part of our quote unquote pilot adventure, I know as a GM would encourage Aaron finding out that the magical girl is the mundane person, which would mean the plus one is what would end up applying. Oh yeah, that would make sense. Even if we, in our hearts, know that we're just mild acquaintances until I realize your magical girl form. And I'm like, wait, you're not just derby cool. <laughs> you're magic cool. <laughs> magic cool. I don't know I'll if let... that was a pun or <laughs> no, not. That's, that's a very good pun. <laughs> Thank oh. you. I try. I, Johnny yay. Gator doesn't laugh. I like being magic cool. <laughs> I'm a magic cool girl. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's it. So we've got our characters, we've got the detail, and we can now fully say our character summary. So I can say that I am going that were we playing this as a game, I would be playing Aaron Caldwell, the Mon trainer who stumbles into success. I love it. So I'm playing Novella Bane, the divided who is lost in the other. And I am playing Daisy Thunder, the magical girl who casts spells. I love it. Very good. All right. So, that so it? did we make characters? We did it. We did it. Did we did We're it. Made. Did these. we did it? I love yeah, these. that's we how you it. say that, Amelia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Oh, so good. Well, thank you so much for joining us um, to talk about Under the Neighborhood. This was this was a lot of fun. Oh, I really, yeah. really enjoyed this. This uh -huh. is like one of my favorite genres of television lately, um, especially as a parent, like there's a oh, lot yeah. of like not good television out there and like these these <laughs> ones are good these ones are good are so, so i had good. a lot of fun with this i had a lot of fun with this absolutely yeah thank you for having me here i sky hartford is close to my heart <laughs> yes <laughs> can't wait to celebrate belated valentine's day with you <laughs> uh do you want to just quickly remind everybody where they can find you online yeah, you can find me online nowhere personally. All I don't right. I, I'm I'm a private personal account, but you can find me at Quest Friends. Yay. At Questfriendspodcast.com. Quest Friends hereafter is this game, but in a world where the realms of the living and the dead are only a plane ride apart. We have a skeleton man who wants to be left alone. We have an angry mon trainer. We have a different character who also has a Mon, but is not a Mon trainer. And then we have one of our characters 10 years from now. Sorry, one of our players 10 years from now. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, that's so good. I love that. It's a lot of fun. Uh, there's not much I can really, besides the premise, there's not much I can really advertise because it is, it's under the neighborhood distilled. It's it's all of the the idea and the excitement and the weirdness of that game. Mm distilled in made into a podcast quest friends is the podcast this game was made for so if you're interested in that if you're interested in ghosts and ghouls i'd recommend you check it out at questfriendspodcast.com the only clarifier i need to put on here though is that while this game is designed off of kids cartoons the show does bend more towards a pg-13 rating and it does have a fair bit of cussing mm -hmm. We don't really get raunchy or anything like that. <laughs> um, as I said, we usually we, we stick to PG-13, assuming PG-13 allowed a lot more swearing than it does. So, so if, 80s PG-13. Yeah. <laughs> so if if you don't mind that, I would highly encourage you to check it out. It is still following this ethos. It is not like we're doing an adult cartoon or anything like that. It just because of the premise of the yes. show and because I know we're on a show that doesn't have swearing, it felt important for me this yeah. time. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, you can find me there at questfriendspodcast.com. Uh, while there, you can also find in the bonus section, 
links to under the neighborhood because it's all it's 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 the Uroboros. It's the snake <laughs> eating its own tail. It's all it. the same thing. Absolutely. Love it. Oh, goodness gracious. I can't wait to get to the fanfic in the next episode. Yes. Uh, but, <laughs> oh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Please join us on the next episode for our discussion block. Call to action. Yeah, like that. I just really love this game. It's so uh, good. Okay, so <laughs> I, we did the session zero earlier today for uh, our IPM game mm -hmm. and like wildly different than what we came up th with this series, of course, because yeah. new people, blah, blah, blah. But like I, I made basically the same character choices. Mm -hmm. But like and still ended up somewhere different. Still somewhere completely different. So I, I'm really excited for people to hear it. But my goodness, this game is very versatile. It is. Well, we started listening to Quest Friends too, the kids and I, like after, you know, having this this session and realizing, like, okay, I really love these kinds of games. And I didn't know that there was a podcast doing this. Mm -hmm. Um, we started listening to Hereafter, and it's totally, totally different than what we made here, too. Um and very cool, very cool. Yeah, this game uh, is just phenomenal, and uh, I can't wait for people to hear the discussion episode next week. Um, but my goodness, uh, our fanfic as usual. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, other news for our calls to action: uh, you can still back the Alchemistresses Kickstarter for a few more weeks. They have reached their funding goal, uh, but there are still lots of cool stretch goals out there, uh, and that would be really amazing to hit some of those. Uh, you can find more info about the Kickstarter in our show notes. Uh, next, I have a note where I just banged on the keyboard and then <laughs> typed Supreme Court and then banged on the keyboard some more. Yeah. Um, because that's just kind of how I'm feeling right now. Mm -hmm. um, I... I don't want to be like, oh, we're one of the shows that we just really don't like to get political because that's like absolutely not the case. Um, this one is a weird one for me, having grown up um, in a very conservative Catholic family. Mm -hmm. That like the fact that I am pro-choice is not something that I have been super loud about. Uh, but I am. I am one of those people who would likely die if I got pregnant again. Mm -hmm. um, my doctors told me that I could not have any more children. Um, and for me, something like adoption is not really a valid choice because it is the birth itself uh, that causes the problems with my postpartum depression. Um, and the act of being pregnant means that I cannot take any of the medications mm -hmm. that I need to take to keep myself alive. Um, and I just really, really struggle with the idea that um, my life is not worth that much and that my children that I already have do not deserve a mother in the name of possibly bringing another child into the world. Right. Um, it just really doesn't sit well with me and it's something that's very, very scary to me um, because there's now been a law passed that in my state, we are in the state of Wisconsin, um, abortion is no longer legal. Oh, um, I didn't hear about that. It's, yeah, we can't. Um, oh, gross. No. Um, so I could go to Chicago about two hours away if something happened. Um, but yeah, um, knowing that I could potentially be in that position is a very real thing, that it's not just something that's happening to other people it's somewhere in a state far away. It's not something that's happening to people I don't know. Um, it is something that is very real and very scary in my own life. Mm -hmm. Um so this is a thing that is just devastating um, to a lot of people for a lot of reasons. Um, I don't think that people should have to have the sort of like terrifying background that I have of, you know, of knowing that it's like medically ill-advised at best. Yeah. Um, I, I think that it should be a choice. Like I think I've never, I always say I've never been more pro-choice than I was um, when I became a parent because being a parent is hard. It is hard work. Um, and there's no one should ever be forced into that mm -hmm. ever, 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 ever. Um, you don't deserve that. Your children don't deserve that. The world does not deserve that. Um, but this is the reality that we're living in, in a lot 
of America right now, particularly in the South, particularly in the Midwest. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's bad and it's scary. Yeah. Um, and we have undone like 50 years of 70 years, whatever it is, of forward progress. Um, and the decision itself is very scary because of the implications for other Supreme Court decisions yeah. like gay marriage. Um, so if you are one of those people out there thinking, well, okay, this sucks, but it doesn't really apply to me. Um, it could, it could apply to voting rights. It could apply to gay marriage. It could apply to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So with all of that said, um, there's always the question of like, what do I do? Um, register to vote, Mm -hmm. give money where you can. Um, but one of the things that we try to do here at least is we try to find things that go along with our show. Yeah. Um, that you can give to. So we have another itch bundle right now um, that supports reproductive rights. The proceeds go to the National Network for Abortion Funds, which is a collective power fund. Um, Proceeds are split across abortion funds in the 20-some states right now uh, where abortion is illegal. So if you are able to pick up that bundle, we'll put a link in our show notes. Um, It goes to a great cause And as usual with these things, you get lots of great games. Mm -hmm. There are tabletop games, there's computer games, all kinds of stuff in there. Um, So almost everyone wins except, you know, America. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Yeah. Stupid America. uh, Well, uh, thankfully there is uh, fun things that we can still uh, listen to. We can still find joy in the world some places. Exactly. (laughs) Um, like tonight we are, uh, after, after this recording on July 5th, actually, we're, we're hosting our first Patreon meet and greet call. Uh, so we, we hope to have seen lots of you there. Um, you know, this is past us talking about future us, uh, in the future. Present present us talking to past uh, what will be past us. Yeah, I'm not really sure what podcasting (laughs) time says about all of this, but... (laughs) But we're, we're really looking forward to doing more of these in the future. So uh, you can support our show at patreon.com slash character creation cast and get access to things like our monthly calls and lots of other great benefits, uh, including shout outs on the show in our call to action section, uh, which is right now. Uh, right now? Yeah, right, like right now. Wait, this minute? Yeah. Right now. So We don't have to worry about time for that one. It's right now. <laughs> it's right now. Uh, so, <laughs> Lieutenant, our first patron, thank you so much for your continued support. Eric Bontz, thank you as well. David, a.k.a. Tigranosaurus and previous guest of the show, thank you. Matt Newton, thank you so much for your support. Daryl Holiday II, thank you. Shadim Cabal, thank you. Mega Heplius. I'm going to have to ask them exactly how to pronounce that uh, in tonight's Zoom session, but thank you so much. Benjamin Sweeney, thank you. Lorcan McGinnis, thank you. Rob Fletcher, thank you so much. And Kevin Brown, thank you for your support. Thank you to all of our future patrons as well. Without your support, we would have a much harder time doing what we are doing. And you're helping us hopefully do some great things in the future with this show. So it's very much appreciated. We are currently out of reviews to read right now, but we would love to have some more so we can thank you personally. We have links in the show notes to the various review platforms out there that we know of. But you can also leave reviews on Podcast Addict if you're on Android. That's all we have for this week, everyone. Uh, Take care of yourselves. Tune in next time for a really great discussion episode and our fanfic. Until then, stay safe, etc. And keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. 
am one of your hosts, Amelia Antrim, and I can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning or on my other podcast, Garbage of the Five Rings. Our other host, Ryan Bolter, can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast it originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by the absolutely fantastic Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game system used in today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you'd like to support our show, find us on Patreon. Get access to bonus episodes, extra outtakes, and much, much more at patreon.com slash character creation cast. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We'll see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit oneshotpodcast.com where you'll find other great shows like Asians Represent. Asians Represent celebrates Asian creators and diversity in the gaming community. Join hosts Agatha Chang and Daniel Kwan as they discuss gaming, genre, and representation with their guests and occasionally argue with each other to the sound of Agatha's beloved Airhorn app.